we skip uh, or we move from one team that's uh, hot to another team that's hot. Clear Creek Command are now four and two after its third straight victory, uh, 37 to seven over Oskaloosa. Um, another team that seems to be hitting its stride, Ryan. Is this a team that can uh, maybe do some damage in the playoffs? Ab absolutely. They're if you're looking for a team in 3A that's quote unquote under the radar that can that can really make a postseason run, and I don't mean and again we don't know exactly how the postseason is going to set up, but I mean I told I talked to Coach Gabe Baker a couple weeks ago and I thought and he kind of confirmed this he had a similar feeling. I thought their schedule set up really well for them this year in terms of when they had their big games. So they opened with a game at Mount Pleasant. Mount Pleasant's a good team. They lose that game by a point in a game and, and were negative three in turnovers. So yeah. they turned it over three times, didn't have one. So, you know, they lost. You're not going to make excuses for it. But at the same time, that's a game they probably could have won on the road. They beat Muscatine. And then they have Xavier in their, in their district opener, which I thought – this is what I thought set up so well for them. I thought that was – the in a, in a season like this where everybody gets into the playoffs, a loss – in week three isn't a potential season ender for, or you know what I mean, isn't going right. to prevent you from getting into the playoffs. I thought that was the perfect time for them to play the team that, you know, is the gold standard in 3A. And, and I mean, has been for a while. I mean, it, I think everybody says every year, you know, Western, it was Western Dubuque and Solon last year in the finals. I, I still think everybody looks – when the old brackets used to come out, where's Xavier? I mean, they're, they're the gold standard 3A program in this state and have been since they dropped down to 3A. So to get a team like that in week three with basically no consequences if you lose that, you know, I thought that was perfect for them to say, let's see where we're at. Let's see how we stack up. Let's see what we can do. And talking to them, they didn't say, talking to the kids about it in, in – you know, Coach Baker, they didn't say, oh, we should have won. We could have won, whatever. They just, they saw that. They felt like they didn't get some breaks in that game. and They were dealing with some injuries. But I, I think as much as you can, I think it was 30 to 7 maybe, Rob. But I think they came out of that feeling like they got a really good sense of where they were and, and where they needed to be. Mm -hmm. And they've outscored their last three opponents something like 127 to 24 and been really impressive taking care of business against teams they should. I think, and they have a real, uh, Friday will be a good kind of test for them to see where they're at again, to see where they've come from Xavier. Grinnell's a good team. They have, uh, they have former West High coach Brian Souser as their head coach. Um, they have a running back that leads the state in rushing yards. He has like 1,500 rushing yards in, seven, in six games and like 24 touchdowns. He's a big physical kid. They have a big line. So it'll be a good test to see how Clear Creek, how far they've come from that Xavier game. But I think that they're the team, they have a lot of the things that I look for when you're talking about a team that can make a run in the postseason. It, it, as, as maybe, I don't know if you want to call them an underdog, but obviously, you know, you look at the top two or three teams in the state, you obviously expect them to win postseason games. But somebody that can be that kind of team that's, that's a postseason sleeper. They have a really, really good coaching staff. Gabe and his staff do a tremendous job. They're going to be well coached. They're going to be well prepared. That's number one. Number two, they have a lot of experience. They have a lot of experienced guys. Alex Figueroa at running back, Ryan Navarra, TJ Bowlers, obviously. They have a lot of guys that have played a ton of varsity football. A lot of those guys got kind of tossed out there as Nate Beckman. A lot of those guys got, got tossed out there as underclassmen, played a lot the last couple of years. They're really experienced. And then they play good defense. Uh, they've given up some rush yards this year. That's something maybe that you could say they could improve on. But offensively, they've got – they're explosive offensively. And what I really like about them is they can – they they have – they're really balanced. balanced. They're yes. really balanced. That's what I was they are. in my head when I saw them yep. play Benton. They put – they stress defenses because you have to respect the run and the pass. They have, I think, three guys that have more than 180 yards receiving. You know, and we're talking about what now? This is going into week seven, so a six-game season, six-game right. regular season. Um, Navarra has really come a long way as a quarterback. He's playing really, really well. He can really, he can really spin it.
but he's added enough of a running element, you know, in his game. Figueroa has like, I think, 750 yards rushing. They can run it on you. They can pass it on you. And then they really have four or five guys in the passing game that they feel really good about. They have some guys that can stretch the field. Mm -hmm. They have some guys that they can run on some underneath stuff. You said it really well. I just, I, they, they present a lot of problems for a defense. I think they're pretty good up front. Um, they had some injuries. They ended up moving TJ Bowlers to tackle. And I think that he's provided something to them there. I mean, he's a great tight end, absolutely great high school tight end, but you've watched TJ enough to know he's a difference maker yep. wherever you line him up. And I think he's kind of gotten comfortable in that spot. They're running the ball. Well, they throw the ball. Well, I really think they're a team that can put up points on anyone. Defense is going to win you games in the postseason. I totally agree with that. They play good defense, but they're going to stress teams defensively and they can hit big plays. And again, the coaching side of it is a big thing for me. They're always really well prepared. They're, what I like about them too is they've always got an exotic for you. Coach <laughs> Baker always said, I mean, really, you know, he's always got a, a flea flicker or some kind of a double pass or whatever. And if I'm an opponent, I would be really worried about playing them because I feel like they're a team that you're in a game and it's 7-7 and all of a sudden you turn around and you look at the scoreboard and it's 28-7 in the middle of the third quarter and you're kind of like, you know, what, what happened a little bit? They can hit big plays. They, can, they feed off momentum. And then with the coaching thing, the, the players have really bought in to that program and I feel like they're really playing, again, after the Xavier game, I feel like they're really playing with a ton of confidence, which – you look at this time of year, it's, you mentioned it. We're going to harp on it all the time. There's going to be some craziness that happens. And I think a team that goes in to the playoffs believing that they can beat anybody is a really dangerous team. And I, I, I love, You said it well. I think they're a team that can really make some noise in the postseason. Rob. I'm really excited to watch what they can do over the next few weeks. Yeah, interested to see what happens with that Grinnell game this week. Uh, and while we're – let's stick with more hot teams in the area here on the, on the Seven Nation podcast. Regina, uh, we talked about the craziness of the schedule, plays Pleasant Valley to open the season, and people are like, oh, no, what's wrong with Regina? Well, they're playing a 4 ranked team. <laughs> you right. Know I mean? uh, Regals yeah. have, have run off five in a row here. Um, obviously, serve notice that it's uh, – that, that – you, you know, they're, they're a force to be reckoned with here again in terms of the state title picture. Best team in, in Class A? I don't know because I haven't had a Class A team, Rob. They were always 1A with West Branch. Right. Since, you, since we started your prep sports, I haven't covered Class A. So when I'm up at the Dome, and we've had a Dome team every year, I'm the type of guy because I'm a dork. I'll go up there and just watch all the games that day, you know. I don't know that I've watched an A game because it just kind of gives you the sense of like what the teams at that, what a dome team looks like, you know, mm -hmm. whether it's 3A, 4A. Sure. Right. And I, I still stand by that. Like you watch a couple games up there, you can see what those types of teams have. I don't know, but I know good football teams. I've talked to people. I haven't seen them. Grundy Center, I know it has a really nice team. St. Ansgar, I think both those two teams are undefeated. I'm sure there's really good class A teams out there. And I, I'm not just saying that. But I've learned, I mean, as you know, doing this over seven, eight, nine, ten years, when Regina's good, they're really good. And same thing we talked about with Clear Creek. Their coaching staff is second to – it's elite at that level. Marv Cook, obviously, but Jason Dumont and Ed Hinkle do such an incredible job with their – you know, with the offense and the defense there as well, with, you know, working with Marv and – you got former Hawkeyes on this. Other former Hawkeyes added this year. Matt Vandenberg is as added, and Drew yep. Cook. Yep. Who and knows a little just, bit about winning state championships? Is back and helping out. We were talking about Marcus Morgan before. Apologies to Drew. I admitted that I was talking <laughs> about the best high school quarterbacks I've ever seen. Different type of quarterback, but man, yeah. Talk about a guy that could push the ball around the field too. I mean, but they just when I shouldn't say when they're good, they're always good. But I just – I've learned don't, – don't pick against Regina. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're going to ask me if they're the team to beat. Of course they are. I mean, it gets to the postseason. They're going to be so well prepared. Their coaching staff did such a good job last year, Rob, of getting them to the Uni Dome. They were banged up with what – they were piecing things together. 
and they, you know, they beat West Branch in that quarterfinal. I mean, I, I really think they maxed out last year getting to the 1A semifinals. They play that game. They don't have Alec Wick, who, you know, forget about classes. He's one of the best receivers in the state. Playmaker, he is no doubt. He's incredible. Um, at, they're without him in that quarter or in that semifinal last year against Van Meter. It kind of got away from him, but they maxed out last year getting to that game. This year, if they max out, they're going to win it. That's my opinion. They're dealing with some injuries again this year, but that with what they have in their offensive trio, and, and I'm going to say small schools again, I can't speak super intelligently to class A and, you know, as, as just a group class A, cause I haven't watched a lot, but you're talking any small schools, you know, one, a, 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 a player. I don't know that you're going to have a better offensive trio than Ashton Cook at quarterback, Alec Wick at receiver, and Theo Coley has really, really given them a giant boost in the run game. I mean, he's become a really dynamic part of that offense, too. Now, like, you really said, came on. Clear, like you said with Clear Creek, it's that balance. It stresses yes. the defense. I watched yep. them play. I watched the first half against Lisbon, and it just – you have to prepare for a lot. They can hit you – because, again, I'm not going to harp on this forever, but Alec Wick is so good. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't – at that level, you can't single cover him. You can't even really – I mean, you got to put – got to build your defense around trying to stop him because he'll go crazy. I mean, he'll have 200, 200 yards and three touchdowns. And what Coley's brought to their running game, he was really good at the end of last year. He's really explosive. And then Ashton Cook is just, again, make all the throws. You know, has played for four years. That's the other thing. You talk about experience. Wick um, – Wick, Cook, they have a ton of guys that got put in there, you know, early in their careers. They've played a ton of football. I think getting to the Dome last year was really big for them. Mm. They hadn't been there in a couple of years. And that's the thing. And I talked to Marv a lot about this. When you're building a program like this, it's not new for anybody ever. When you're going every year, which they were, you get there. There's not that, like, initial, like, even, even kids that didn't play a central role in the game the year before, they've got the routine down, right? They've gotten up on the – those, those games in the past, and Class A will be a different schedule now, but in 1A, they always had those morning games, you know, in yeah. the semifinals, and they'd done the routine before. They'd gotten on the bus, they'd eaten, they'd gone up there, they'd walked into this big, giant building. You know, it's different. You play on the turf, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I think getting – I think that's part of what puts them ahead in that race in A right now. They got there last year. They're not going to be awestruck by it. Those guys have played there. I think they're better up front this year than they were maybe last year. Um, but they just it, it it made me smile when you said it the last couple of years I've had people ask me or you you feel like it's the sentiment early on in the season man what's up with Regina because they would lose to Cedar Epid Xavier you know and this is actually a credit to Regina they won so many of those games you know yeah. in the in from 2010 and on and even before that they won so many games against the Solons the Xavier's or they were in those games a couple of years where they maybe lost them by a touchdown that you get conditioned to it that class one, a schools aren't supposed to go beat right. three, a champions and three, a semifinalists and three, a powerhouses. It doesn't happen all the time. And they made it common that then this year they lose to a team that's that they add to the schedule late that again, talk about a late, a, a tough late ad pleasant Valley runs the wishbone and they run it really well, and their coach has been there for a long time, and you see something like that, and you don't have a long time to prepare for it, and now you look, and I think they're 6-0. and um, I'm pretty sure, I know they were 5-0, I'm pretty sure they won last yeah, week. Yeah, they're still unbeaten, I think. So they're a really good team, and then you come out of that, and, and you kind of, I kind of got the sense that people were like, oh man, like you said, is what's wrong with Regina? It's like, because you've been so conditioned to them <laughs> that they're going to go you know, beat these bigger teams. And yeah. it's like, you know, they're, they'll be fine. And then they got a really nice win in week two up at Clear Lake, who's a, who's a really good two-way program. Yeah. So they're just fine. They're going to go into the playoffs. And, you know, we'll, we'll see what they're – when they get a little bit further because obviously they should be playing, you know, deep into the playoffs again. But like I said, they haven't won it the last couple of years. I get that. But to me, I talked about Xavier being the gold standard. I think Regina is still the gold standard for, you know, small, small school, small class football in the state, you got to beat them. It's a little bit like the Dowling thing, you know, they're not yeah. going to beat themselves. You're going to have to come, you're going to have to come beat them. And I think this year, 
they're the team that, that people are chasing right now. And 